In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to create a membership website from scratch. Membership websites are so powerful because they can turn a basic functioning website into a money making website. So what you're going to learn in this tutorial is enough for you to build membership websites for other clients. It's super powerful. Plus I have a special bonus for you. If you either purchase Divi or show members using my affiliate link, I'm going to give you access to Divi University absolutely free. Divi University is a one stop shop for anyone who wants to specialize in Divi. So there will be tutorials, workshops, plugins, pretty much everything you need to make your Divi websites look awesome. The link to all of that is in the video description below. So here's what we're going to be designing in today's tutorial. So here we have this beautiful hero area. And if you scroll down here, we have the features area as well. And all the way down here, we have these blog posts. But if you look close, we have members tutorial and we also have free tutorials. Now notice what happens when I click on members tutorial. If you are not a member, then you would not have access to this. And I'll show you in a moment what this looks like. So if I copy this URL and go to incognito mode, now look at that. So it's now telling me here, become a member or log in. So if I was log if I wasn't logged in and I was a member, I'll just click over here and I will just log in. Okay. And this is how you want your website to run. Now, if you're not a member and you really want to access the content, guess what? You'll have to click here on become a member. And this now takes you to this sales page. Now this is automatically generated. You don't have to go in and uh, do a lot of customizations. I will show you how to set this up with shortcut. Okay. If I scroll down here, you can see we have different payment options. And once you click here, it takes you to the cart and look at this slide out item here. This looks really nice. If you had a coupon code, you'd add your coupon code here and you can just click on checkout. All this is pre-designed for you. The checkout page is nice. It's clean. It's not even confusing. You'd add your name, your email address, and this one here uses PayPal, but you can also set up Stripe and also take some credit card payments. Now, once you're done with that, if you hit debit or credit card, this will take the payment and this will now give you access to all the content. The question is what content do we have access to? Basically, whatever you set as a protected piece of content will be protected under that membership. For example, this workshop page is accessible to lifetime members. Look at that. This is just a video. Uh, now I'm just pretending that this is the amazing workshop that costs a lot of money. Now on the bottom here, we have the description we can add links here. We can even add downloads. So now let me show you what this looks like inside. So if I come over here to dashboard, there are two plugins that are running this system. Basically it's shortcut and show members. And these guys work really well together. So here on show members, Here's how I've managed to go in and set up my membership. So this one here is called lifetime members and notice that there isn't much to go in and customize. All I've done here, I've protected a specific page called workshop right here. I have some downloads and I also have this message that you show, which says restricted content. It has a button here which says become a member and pretty much that's it. It's so easy to set up. Even you can do it and I'll guarantee you that you can do it. So let's dive in and let's get started with how to create a membership website with Shortcut, Show Members and Divi. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is to install WordPress. So instead of me doing it on a server, I'm going to use this service called ZipWP. It's very easy to use and I can spin off WordPress websites in seconds. Now that I'm, uh, now that I'm logged in, the next thing I'm going to do is to create my site. So I'm going to click here on create new, and this is going to be a blank website. So I'm going to click on blank and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this uh, DV membership. But of course, in your case, you can call it whatever you want. Next, I'm going to click on create site and notice within five seconds, I now have my website over here. So to log into my website, all I have to do is to click on one click login and pretty much that's it. So I'm now going to close out of uh, zip WP over here. All right. So now that I have this, the next step now is to install a Divi because this is going to be a Divi based membership website. All right. So I'm going to come over here now to appearance, click on themes. So I already have a Divi account. So I'm going to come over here and you can see here on my downloads, I can download the Divi theme here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
Now, in your case, I would highly recommend you purchase TV. It is very, very powerful, and uh, you can get unlimited websites if you purchase the uh, Pro license. Anyway, DV now has been downloaded. Next, I'm going to come back over here to this tab and then click on Add New Theme. So this now allows us to add DV onto the website that we are building. Let's click on Upload Theme. Now, remember, we've just downloaded it. So I'm going to now come over here to choose File. Next, I'm going to double click on DV and click on Install Now. So this now is going to install DV onto our system. Now, while this is happening, the next step now is to get our API key. So to get that, I'm just going to come over here to my account and then I'm going to go to account details. So this is where we're going to get our API key. Now the API key allows us to get all our downloads and also uh, the extra support that DV gives us. All right. So now I'm going to click to copy. Next, I'm going to go back to my site here because DV now has been installed. Now let's activate. So I'm going to click here to activate. So before we even do anything, we might as well go in and add our API key. So I'm going to come over here to DV, and then we're going to go to theme options. So over here on theme options, uh, we have a few things that we may need to customize before we get started. So the first thing is to come over here to updates, and then we're going to add our username, and we're also going to add our API key. So remember, I copied it, so I just need to paste it now, and then click on save. All right, great. Now, of course, when Divi comes in, it has this color palette, but we don't want to use the generic color palette. And besides, the colors are going to work with the type of websites we use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to a website called um, Coolers. All we have to do is to click on the generator here. Great. So now that I've clicked on the generator, it's going to give us some colors to play around with. So I know that I'm going to need some browns because the site that we're de designing is going to be a recipe site, a cooking site. So you have to have colors that work with that. So yes, greens are good, but um, let's just continue on. Now, right now the colors are changing because I'm pressing the space bar, the space bar, okay? So I think this color here will work great, uh, but if you wanna go in and tweak it, you can just click here and perhaps maybe make it a bit darker like that. Smoky black, I think that's fine, but let's bring it down a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. Here we have this earth yellow, and again, this works with uh, the type of website I'm working on. So let's uh, make it a bit lighter, by the way. And then um, here we're going to need a very light color. So we're gonna go with that because I don't like using pure white when I design. And then here we also have green. So uh, let's go into the shades as well. And uh, let's see if we can choose better green. All right. So I think this color palette should work fine. But as I mentioned, in your case, you can pretty much use any color palettes that you want. Now, check this out. This is now how we add our colors to Divi. So if I click here to copy the hexadecimal value, I can now come over here to Divi. And I'm going to start with the first color here. I'm going to go in and paste it like that. Move on to the next color. Now, remember, I mentioned that we don't want to use a pure white. So I'm going to copy this color here and we're just going to populate now our color palette. And this is the best way and the best workflow you need to follow as you're designing your websites. All right. So we're going to continue on and paste our colors, move on to the next one. Now, I know here our color palette doesn't have as many colors that as um, I need here on Divi, but I want to show you a quick tip on how to populate it. So now I have four colors. I think I have space for one more, which is this one here. And then I'm gonna come back and we are going to paste our color like that. All right, oops. So you notice what happened? I added this dark color here, which I added before. So let's go back and fix that. So we're gonna go with this one here and let's paste it back here like that. All right, great. So these are four colors. I think I'm missing the green. So let me come back over here. I'm gonna copy the green here, back here. And the green has to come on this one. So I'm gonna go in and paste it. Great, so now we have these three colors. So what I normally do is I turn this into white. So let's put six Fs like that. So now we have white. And then over here, I put grays. So I normally go with um, all sixes. And then I can also go with a lighter gray. So let me first put on all these zeros. 
this is going to make us uh, have this black color. And then I can just drag this to have a lighter gray. So you can see here, I could go maybe with something like that. So that's our color palette. I'm going to go now ahead and click on save changes. With our color palette complete, the next step now is to head over to the theme builder and change the fonts because these fonts are pretty much tedious to go in and change them every time we are designing an element in Divi. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here now to appearance. In fact, you know what? Let me just make sure I've saved the changes. So I'm going to do this one more time. All right. So now we're going to come over here to appearance and then click on themes. In fact, let's just go to customize because this is where we can add all our customizations in terms of our fonts. All right. So let's go to uh, general settings here. We're going to go to typography. So first of all, let's set this to 16 for the body text. For the body line height, I think 1.8 should do. Now let's head over now to our heading text size. Let's set this to 36. All right, so this is the main part we've been waiting for. So our header font... We need to scroll all the way down here until we get poppins. That's the font uh, I'm going to use for this. But in your case, you can use pretty much any font you want. So here's my font here. Next, I'm going to go to my body font. So I'm going to click over here. Again, I'm going to scroll all the way down until I find poppins. Okay, it's further down here. Oh, there we go. All right, so now we have poppins. We also have our body link color. So this is where we can go in and remember we created our color palette so we can choose our body link color from here as well. So let's go with um, this reddish color. So that's going to work for our links. That's great. Now we're also going to need to add our body text color. So let's head over here. And uh, we also have our grays that we chose earlier on. So let's go with this one. Great. Now, if you hadn't chosen your color palette, this is where you'll be struggling to enter all these uh, settings. All right, so this looks fine. Now, let's go ahead and publish this. All right, great. So, at the moment, our website is set as a blog, but we need to change this because we need to have a proper landing page, which is great when people, you know, come on the home page. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to close out of here and we're going to go in and create a page. So, let's head over to pages click on add new page so this page is going to be our home page so we might as well just uh, name it home and then uh, we continue from there all right so here's our page i'm going to click on use divi builder and this is the fun part this is where we get to design our home page so remember i mentioned that this website is a membership for you know someone who is interested in monetizing their cooking skills. So let's click on start building here. Right, so let's start from scratch. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to um, add a row, and then we're gonna come over here, close this out, click on this plus button, and then we're gonna go to full width. Now the reason why we're here is because I'm just gonna use this full width header. I really love how this one works. And before we continue here, I'd like to snap this over to the left so I can see what I'm designing over here. All right. So for our title here, I'm going to say become a cooking pro. So here we notice that we have this text right here. Now we're going to add our own description text. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add some dummy text because if I start typing, my typing is so slow, you guys will be so bored. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this button here says click here. We're going to say become a member. So we're going to link this later on to our sales page, right? So become a member. Now let's start in, uh, let's start to stylize this and make it look really awesome. So the first thing we're going to do is to come over here to the design tab, go to layout and let's center this. Next, we are going to make this a uh, full screen so that we have more to play around with on our design here. So the next step now is to add a background image. But before we do that, we might as well play around with this text. So I'm gonna click here on this pencil icon and make this bigger. So I'm gonna come over here to regular font, let's turn this to bold, and now we're gonna change the size. So let's just make it big, nice and big, so it's really bold. And then on the line height here, let's increase it a little bit. 
So let's go with 1.2. So what you need to do as you're doing this, you just need to keep an eye on this and see I mean, like what it looks like. Now here I'm using pixels. You can also use M's. So I can say 3 EM. Uh, let's try 3.2. Okay, I think that looks great. Now let's move on to this text right here. So instead of 16, I'm going to say 1 EM. See how that looks. Maybe I may want to increase it a little bit. Maybe 1.2. All right, so that looks great. Line height, there's no need for that. Maybe let's bring it to 1.2. Four. All right, so that's looking great. The next step now is to add an image to the background here because uh, I think this looks much better if it has an image. Let's go back now to our content, go to background. So you can see this is the color that we have here. So what we're missing is the image. So I'm just going to delete this color. Come over here to background image. Click on this plus button. To download your images, I use this website called Pexels, and this is what I'm using for today's tutorial. So what you want to do is to go in and download all your images. For the Heroes um, images, I use um, the size, which is 1920 by 1272, or anything 920 by something, okay? But for my blog post, I'm going to use 1280 by whatever, because sometimes these images are different sizes. I've already gone ahead and downloaded my images. So let's head, head over here and click on select files to upload them onto my library. So I'm just going to hit the shift key and add or highlight all my images and then click on open. All right, so now my images are now uploading to my media library. This, this just makes things much, much easier for me as I am designing my website. So in your case, if you have your own images, you know, take pictures of your images, I mean, of your products, be it food, books, whatever type of membership you're working on, just take the pictures and then make sure you resize them and then add them onto your media library. All right, so I'm going to uh, choose, let's try this one here. I'm going to click upload image. So that's the image I'm going to use as my main hero image. Now already you can see this is looking very exciting. Now let's head over back to design. So what we need to do here, Divi has a really cool feature called overlay. This is where I can go in and add my color. So the idea here is to play around with these colors and see what works best for you. All right. So what I'm going to do now is since we have our overlay here, I can now click and then drag to add a bit of transparency so I can see what is happening in the background there. So you can see we have a bit of our image showing. If you want to go with a darker color, you can do that as well. And then you can just drag it like that. So there's two things I normally do here. Sometimes I, I like using black because it has much better contrast. And then all I have to do now is to drag the slider until I am happy with what it looks like. Okay, so I think this looks cool. Let's go ahead now and save. Now remember, we had created this uh, section. Let's go ahead and delete it <laughs> and then uh, recreate it again, okay? I'm gonna click here on this plus button. We're gonna go with um, regular. So for this here, we are going to go with a single column. And in here, we're going to add uh, some text. So this one here is just gonna go as a title, okay? We just need it as a title. So I'm just gonna go in here, highlight all this and hit paste. And then I'm going to go to design. Oh, in fact, you know what? Before we go into design, let's highlight all this and set this to heading three, okay? It's very important. Now let's go to design, heading text. So remember, this is set to heading three, but if you do forget, you just wanna highlight over here and click on this pen brush icon. And this now will take you to page three. We're going to make this all caps. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this to 2 EM like that. And I'm also going to add some letter spacing. So should we go with three or four? I think four will do. Now, here's the thing. Divi has what are known as presets. So I can actually use presets to save this font here so that I can use it in the future instead of me going in and um, adding all these values manually, 
Okay. In fact, you know what? Two EM is a bit too much here. Let's set it to one point eight. Oops. So make sure you type the right uh, amounts here. All right. Next, I'm going to center this. And then I'm going to come over here to the top, click on this drop down and create new preset from current styles. So I'm going to call this heading three. And in brackets, I can just call this section headings so that it's easier for me to uh, identify this. All right, so now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, we also notice that, in fact, let's save this. So we also notice that here we don't have the right padding that we ideally like as we're designing our website. So let's go into our section settings here, and we are going to adjust our padding. So I'm going to go to spacing here, and I'm going to set this to 6% to the top and bottom. Excellent. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say create new preset from current styles. And then I'm going to set this to section padding. So what I'm going to do differently this time is I'm going to go and assign this to default. So every time now I open a section, this is going to have my 6% apply to it. All I have to do now is to click on yes. And pretty much we are good to go. All right, so now let's continue designing this. So, so far we've created this main hero area here. Now let's add another row, but this time we're going to have three rows like that. What we're going to add here is a blurb. So let's go ahead and add it. So here I would prefer to use icons. So let's go to image and icon. Okay, so now that we have our icon selected, I can now choose whatever icon I want that works with my membership website. So I'm going to add this um, coffee mug here, go to design. So image and icon, I can choose my color. So let's go with this. Or we can even go with this dark color here. It doesn't really matter because this, I think, looks more classy. All right, so now that I have this, we can also adjust our size here. So let's bring it down to about 56. Now we have our text here. I'm going to go in. And first of all, we're going to center it. And we want to make it slightly bigger because right now uh, it's at 18 pixels. So I want to use EMs. So let's go with uh, 1.4 EM. Great. Next, we're going to make it all caps. We're going to add a bit of letter spacing. So you notice that as I'm designing this, I'm really looking at my design here to make sure that things are looking the way I want. In fact, you know what? Let's bring this down a little bit to 1.3, but this time let's make it bold. I know this may look like it's taking a long time to design something so basic, but you're going to be happy once you see what I'm going to do with this because I'm going to create this as a preset. All right. So next we have this text here. I'm going to come over here to this uh, little paintbrush icon. We're going to center this. The size here I think is great, so let's leave it as it is. Okay, so finally, we want to come over here to our content, go to our text, and this is where we're going to change the contents of what is in here. Again, I'm also going to add my own title to that. So let's go in and add our title. Instead of saying your title goes here, let's just add something that looks more realistic. All right, so with that now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the top here, create new preset from current styles, and then I'm just going to say blurb. Okay, how about that? I'm going to assign this to the default and then say yes. All right, so now it's time to create the next one. So you're going to notice that when I create another one here, it's pretty much going to be very, very easy. So let's search for our blurb. In fact, it's right here. You notice that the style is pretty much the same. The sizes are the same. So I can go in now and start adding all my information. So for this one here, I might as well go in and add my text like that. And I also need to add my heading. So again, I'm just going to add my heading quickly 
by coming over here to the title and pasting it. Finally, we need to add our icon. So let's go to image and icon, and then we're just gonna make sure we activate use icon. So I'm gonna scroll down here, and um, since this is a um, recipe type membership website, we're gonna go in and add this icon here. I think that works well. Now let's add another section. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button regular section and we are going to go with let's go with two columns all right so let's close out of here first but for us to distinguish our sections i'm going to come to my section settings go to the background and we are going to add a background color now remember we created our colors here ahead of time so that's the color now i'm going to use for my background section all right so let's save this so here we'd like to add maybe an image so let's add our image module like that and we're going to choose our image. Now we have an image that we added from our media library. So let's go ahead and uh, select maybe this one here, upload image. So pretty much, oops, something happened. Oh yeah, it's there. There was just a delay. And we're also going to add some rounded corners here just to you know make it look much nicer. So we're gonna go to design, border, and I'm just gonna dial in here to about say 10%. And that's good. So that's our image. Next, we're going to add a bit of text in here. So let's add our text module. So all I have to do here is to just add a bit of text as a title and then the rest as a paragraph. Now we may need to add a bit more information here. So this is more like an about our membership. So you may want to add a bit more content in here because that doesn't look right. There we go. So I think that's better. Now remember, with Divi, you can also use AI to populate this content here. All right, so we have a bit of information here about our membership. We have our features here, and we now have our main landing page. So remember, we haven't linked this yet. So let's save this page. It's time now to move on to our content, because what we need to do is to decide what we need to protect on our website. All right, so before we can go in and start adding all our content, let's exit the Visual Builder so we can take a look at the page that we've just created. All right, so you can see here, this looks quite cool. Very simple, very clean. Excellent. Now, let's head over to our dashboard. So um, as I mentioned, let's create some categories here in our blog post. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go to categories. So the first thing we're gonna do is by default, we get this uncategorized. So let's go in and edit it. So we're going to change this to free. Let's call it free tutorials. I'm going to copy this and we're going to go into the slug here and paste it as well and hit update. Okay, next we're going to go back to categories here. And this time we're going to create another one, but this one here is for member or members tutorial. Let's copy that and we're gonna paste this as a slug as well. Add new category. So as we are working on this, you're going to notice where this is going to be very important because we want to distinguish free tutorials from members tutorial, okay? All right, great. So now that we have this, the next step is to create um, the header and the footer for our website. So to do that, we're gonna come over here to Divi and then click on theme options. Actually, we need to go into the theme builder. So here's where we create our header. I'm just gonna click once in here and then click on build global header. Now I'm not gonna design something that's very complicated. I just want something so basic so that you can see how to put this together. So what we're gonna start off with here is to work on the background. So I'm gonna to go to my background here and add a background color. So I'm gonna go with this one. And we're also going to go to design and let's go to spacing. Now remember, this is going to come in at six pixels by default. So let's set this to one for now and then save. Next, we're gonna come over here, add a single column. And then in here, let's search for our menu. So here it is. 
Now we haven't uh, created our menu yet. This has our default information, but while we have this, we might as well go in and do a few changes. So I'm gonna come over here to background, make sure that this background here is set to transparent, which is great. Next, I'm gonna go to our logo. Now at the moment, we don't have a logo, but uh, let me see if I can grab a logo from my desktop somewhere. I'm gonna hit select files. And I know on my desktop, I should have a basic logo but in your case you want to have a proper logo okay so let's go with this one upload image all right so this is where we need to go in and resize it and make sure that the, the size looks great so we're going to go to logo in fact we need to go to layout so right now it's left aligned let's um see what it looks like when it's centered now i don't think that looks great all right let's keep it left aligned for our menu text we are going to change our link color to let's go with this one and then our normal menu uh, text color let's see if this one works yeah i think that works since these are links so i'm going to bump this up a little bit maybe to about 15 we're going to make it all caps and we are going to add a bit of letter spacing to one pixel. Right. So we are now going to go to sizing. So, so you can see here our logo width is a bit too, too much. So we're going to bring it down all the way to about 20%. So it's going to depend on your logo as to, you know, what size it is and how much you need to bring it down by. Okay. Uh, next, we have our module alignment. We're going to leave this as it is. So for our text alignment here, I'm going to align it to the right so that our logo is all the way on the left and our text is all the way to the right. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and save. Now, I need to go in and remove some of this uh, padding that we have on our row settings. So I'm going to go to spacing and we're going to set our padding here to zero. We're going to do the same to the bottom. And pretty much we are getting there. All right, so let's leave this uh, as it is for now. I'm going to hit save. And this now is going to be applied across the whole website. So we're going to close out of here, save changes. And now we have our header all set. We are going to work on the footer at a later stage. Next, let's work on our content. So let's go to our posts. I'm going to show you how to add a single post. And then later on, you can then pretty much work on adding on the rest by yourself. All right, so we're gonna click on add new post. So for our title here, I'm just gonna say post one. And for this, we're gonna use the default editor. I mean, I will let you know why we're using the, the default editor here. So it's time now to enter all my content. So I'm just gonna go in here and paste my content just like that. And then over here, make sure you click on posts and let's add our featured image. I'm gonna set featured image here. And my image for this one here is going to be this one. Great, let's go ahead and set featured image. Now we can go ahead and set this to the right category. So I'm gonna come over here to categories. And this one here is going to go under members tutorials. Hit publish and publish one more time. And we are good to go. So what we're going to notice straight away, I'm gonna open this post in a new tab. And you notice that this looks very, very ugly, right? So in this tutorial, I wanna show you everything that makes your website look really, really nice. So we are going to create a template for this to make it look much, much better than what we have right now. So let's head over back to, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to DV and then we're gonna to go to our theme builder. So, so far we created our header in our theme builder here. So we're gonna create a new template and this is for all posts. I'm gonna create a template, right? So let's add our custom body. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a single row, but in here we're going to add text. I'm gonna select it. Now, before we do anything here with the text, I just wanna go in here and go to background and add a background color. So let's go with this and save it. And now back to our text, we are going to go and click on 
dynamic text and we're going to go to post or archive title. So this is going to automatically choose our post, whatever it is, because this is dynamic content. Now we're going to go into our design text and let's see if we can increase our size here. In fact, let's use 3EM. Great. And let's change our color. I think I'll go with that. I'll make it all caps. We are going to also make it semi bold. We're going to adjust our line height. Let's go with 1.2. Okay, great. So now that we have this at 1.2, let's go ahead and save it. Let's add another text module by clicking on this plus button. And this time we are going to add, in fact, let's click our dynamic content. Let's go with post publish date. And then here on before, we're just going to say published on and then colon. Okay, so you can see here we have our date and everything looks great. I'm going to save that. And then over here on the design, we're going to go to the text and we're just going to change the color like that. Now we can go in and also add the author and all that good stuff. But you know what? We're not going to spend too much time on that. Let's just create a nice, simple template. Next, we're going to add a single row. And in here, we're going to add our post content. Let's go ahead and select that. And pretty much that's all we need to do. Next, we need to add another row. But this time in this row, we're going to add our comments because ideally we would want to have our comment section here where people can go in and add their comments. And let's just add a very light color in here. So now that I've chosen my uh, color, I can go now to design spacing. So here in spacing, let's add 6%. See how that looks because we need to give this design some breathing space. But if 6% is a bit too much, no problem, we can always go in and make some adjustments. But you know what, I think this looks great. And then finally, I can just go to my border here and set this to 10. As you can see, this is very subtle. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. We're gonna save one more time. Now remember, this is what our post looked like. So notice what's gonna happen now once I save this, complete the design. So I'm gonna close out of here, save changes. And now when I refresh this, notice what happens. We have our post one here and we have our comments area. Now I know this area here doesn't look very exciting, but I wanna show you something quickly that we can do to make it even more cool. I'm gonna go back to my custom body here. So what we're gonna do is we are going to add our featured image in the background so that it just shows in a very subtle way. I'm gonna click here on my section settings. Let's go to our background. Now let's add an image by clicking on the third tab. And then we're going to, in fact, you know what? We don't even need to add an image. We just click on the dynamic thing, featured image. Great, so now we have our featured image. So what we need to do is we need to um, go over here to blend mode and set this to multiply. Okay, so what you're going to notice right away is we now have this dark color here. But the cool thing is if we go back to background color, we can click anywhere in here and adjust this. So if you drag this down a little bit, you can see that we're now revealing what we have here in the background. Let's save this and take a look. So what I would normally do is once I've done this, I can just come over here, refresh. If I need to make some adjustments, I go back and make the adjustments. All right, so now you can see we have a subtle image here in the background of our post, which looks, you know, pretty cool. You know what, let's go back and uh, make it more visible again. Let me go to background. But what I've noticed is, you know, we have our color from our color palette here. Let's just drag it all the way down to black because this has a much better effect. So let's bring this down a little bit to about 78. All right, okay, now it's saved. Let's go back and refresh this. Okay, that, that's looking much better actually. All right, this is really cool. So now you can see here we have now a post which looks 
very, very nice as compared to what we had before. So now we can add our call to actions. We can add pretty much anything that we want in here. All right, so that's our posts. So what you need to do now is to go ahead and add all your blog posts and make sure you add them to the right category. So I'm going to do one more here as well so that uh, in case you've forgotten how to do it. So let's go back to our posts. Click on add new post. So the previous one I added was a members one. So let's add post two like that. Default editor. Remember, this needs to be default editor. And then I'm going to paste my content in here. Now, if I need to add a link, I can just highlight it here, add a link like that, hit enter. If I wanted to uh, maybe add just as a title, no problem. I can just go in here, highlight this and transform this into a heading. And right away, you can see we now have a heading. So it is quite, you know, flexible to work with, but not as good as Divi. All right, so now we are on post. This is where now you want to set this to free tutorials. And remember, you want to set your featured image. And this time I'm going to go with this one, set featured image, and then we are going to publish. Let's view the post. And look at that. Isn't that awesome? Here's our link and here's our title. So now that we've added our blog post, the next step now is to add these blog posts on our homepage. So right now, as it stands, this is what it looks like. So ideally, it would look much better if we added some blog posts on this page. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm now going to enable the visual builder. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here until we get to uh, this section. So we're going to click here on this plus button and we're going to add a regular section. And in this section, we're going to add a single row. Let's add our text module like that. And then we're going to call this latest posts. Next, we're going to set this to heading three. And then we're going to come over here to the top and make sure that it's set to heading three section so now it looks pretty much the same as this one because we created this as a preset now i hope you remember that okay next i'm going to save this we're going to hover over here click on this plus button and we're going to add another row and in this row we're going to add our blog posts so let's select blog so we can specify how many we need here now i don't want to make this too crazy so we're going to go with three and we're going to say all categories. So this is what it looks like so far. The except, we're going to reduce this to about 100. Uh, we don't need to offset anything. And then over here on the elements, we can pretty much show or remove what we don't want. So usually I don't like showing the author. So I'm going to remove the author from the, um, from the text here. And I'm just going to leave the date and... Yeah, the category. All right, so now that I have this, the next step now is to come over here to design, layout, and we're going to change this from full width to grid. Okay, so this just gives us a much better layout, as you can see. Let's work on our titles here. So you notice that I'm just clicking on this paintbrush icon. So we're going to go with um, this red. And then over here, we are going to uh, make it dark and bold. So that, or semi-bold, so it just stands out a little bit. Okay, 14 is fine. And then over here, we are also going to set this to 1.1 EM. Okay, that's a bit too much, so let's go with 1 EM. Okay, so that's looking great. Uh, what I may also want to do is to come over here to border, and we are going to set this to 10, because remember, that's what we've been using all along. All right, so I think that looks great. I'm now going to save this. Save one more time. And pretty much our homepage is done. So let's exit the Visual Builder so we can take a look at what we've achieved so far. Okay, so we're going to scroll all the way down here until we get our latest post. And notice what happens when I click on this one here. It's going to take us to our post. And this looks really, really nice. Excellent. 
Now let's continue on with our design. So what we're going to do, since this is going to be a membership website, we are probably going to have some pages with important information that you may want to charge for, which is the reason why people are coming to your membership website. So we're going to create one page with a lot of information, text, and images, and then we're going to create another one with a video. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to come over here to pages, click on add new. So the first one here, I think let's call it workshop. So we're just going to make sure that we use the default editor as well. We don't want to go into too much design because templates just makes it much, much easier for us to design. Okay, so with that now, let's head over to YouTube. So I'm going to come over here and choose get shareable link. Now, what you may also want to do is to come over here and mark it as unlisted if you're going to add it over here. Okay, so let's add a video here like that. I'm gonna choose YouTube and I'm gonna paste my URL like that. Click on embed. So we're gonna pretend that this is a workshop which has amazing information which you are now going to charge for, okay? We may also want to add a bit of text here. So let's add some paragraph text. I'm gonna copy some text here and paste that. And what we also want to do is to add a heading to this. So we're going to come in here, add a heading. Okay, so pretty much that's looking great. Now I'm going to publish it. All right, let's go back. And there is a page here which we need to delete, which is our sample page here. So let's trash it. Now it's time to add Shore members. So this is the plugin that is going to allow us to give access to, let's say, the workshop or our post that we've just created. Now, the beauty of this is this is where now if someone purchases your membership level, they will get access to it as long as they're logged in. Okay, so let's go ahead and download Show Members. I have a link to that in the video description below. I mean, this plugin is so amazing that, you know, it's fantastic how it works. So we're going to head over here to Show Members and download it. I already have a license, as I mentioned. So I'm just gonna log in. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to click in here and download it. Now over here is where we need to get our license key. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. And then back on our website, we are now going to add our plugin. So I'm gonna come over here, click on add new plugin. We're going to upload it since we downloaded a moment ago. Click on choose file. And now we're going to, oops, oh, here it is. Double click on that. Click on install now. And then activate. Next, what we need to do is to now come over here to the left, click on show members. And then we want to come over here to the top and click on unlicensed. And then paste the license key in here like that. Click on activate license. And pretty much we are good. So there are a few settings that we may need to go through here so you can understand how they work. So on the admin settings here, we can decline admin access to specific people on our website. So let's say you have a lot of editors and you don't want them to access your contents, which is protected. You can just add them like that. Contributor, maybe subscribers as well, like that. <clears throat> and then click on save changes. Next, you can click, click on user roles. So you can say, well, I want to have members here um, as a user role and I'm going to create a role. Okay, so you can add as many as you want here and you can also edit them. Redirection rules. This is where you can decide where people go once they have logged in. So we're going to come back to this page uh, once we are ready because we need to design this login redirect page. Login customizer, this is where we get to uh, customize our information on our login page. But again, I'm just gonna leave things as default as they are. We also have login restrictions. Now, I really love this because, you know, there are people out there that buy the membership and then share their um, registration with pretty much all their friends and family. So you can limit this to three active logins, okay? So right now it's on all roles which is fantastic, but if you want to specify who does not share or does not have the concurrent logins, you can specify them in here as well. Okay, brilliant. We can save changes. 
Now, what we need to do is to create the error page. This is the page that people go to when they try to log into your website and they are not members. You don't necessarily have to uh, create this page. You can just add a message. So let's go ahead and create a membership level just in case you guys are not interested in setting up a specific page. So if I come back on show members here, now we have the ability to go to our access groups. And by the way, if you come over here to the top and click here, this is what's going to uh, take you to your settings. Okay, so this is where the little icon is. And now you're back over here to your settings. Okay, so I just thought I'd mention that because it's hiding all the way at the top there. So what you want to do now is you want to now go in here and create a access. So think of access groups as a membership level. So here we are going to call this uh, lifetime members. Okay, and uh, now let's choose the content to protect. <laughs> so this is where it gets exciting because remember, we created that workshop page and we also created some blog posts and a category. All right, so you're going to come over here to all pages. Uh, we need to choose specific pages. So we're going to scroll all the way down here and there we go, specific pages. And then we're going to come over here and let's make sure workshop is selected. Now, while we're here, what also we need to add, so just click in here to add uh, more items to protect. So remember, we worked on our categories. So this time we're going to choose the categories archive, and then we're going to specify which archive it is. So we're going to click in here. So I think it was called members. There we go. So I'm going to select that. Now, over here is where we get to redirect people that are not members of the site so this is where you would come in and add your url but like i mentioned we're not adding a url we can add a message so our message can be in here so you can decide that um, the content you're trying to access is restricted or you can just say restricted content right so here i can say restricted content uh, click the button below to become a member the button text here can be become a member like that. And then the URL is to our sales page. Now, what I also want to do here is to make sure that uh, I enable the login button because sometimes it may be that someone is logged out. That is why they can't see the content. Now here I can choose my sales page. So you can see here that we have the workshop page, homepage. So if I had the page here, my sales page, I could just enter it over here, but I don't have that yet. So let's go ahead now and save access group. So what we're going to do now is to test this and see if this is working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this URL. It's quite long. So let's go ahead and copy that. And then we are going to go to file, new incognito window. I'm going to paste this link. Okay, so we are on our homepage now. So we're going to scroll down until we get to our blog posts. So this one here is for members. So let's see what happens when I click on it. You see, it says this is this content is restricted, blah, 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 become a member or log in. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Now, I know the workshop page is also restricted. So look at that. So as you can see, this is very, very powerful and it is so easy to set up. So what I'm going to do next is to just make sure that we sort of make sure that uh, uh, this expiration here is not activated. But if you wanted this membership level to expire after a certain time, you can just click here and then choose the duration. So relative date. So this could start counting down from whatever time that they have logged in or created the membership. So you can also add a specific date here. So let's say you pick a date. This could be maybe the 20th of March. And pretty much you have your date there. But if you want to clear it, you can just clear it like that. But you know what? We're going to leave this open. So now let's click on Save Access Group. So at this stage, you're probably thinking, okay, so right now we were able to go in and protect our content. But what if someone wants to purchase from my link. I mean, how do they purchase and then get access to the content? 
So this is where we are going to need to add another plugin called Shortcut. We're going to come back over here to plugins, click add new plugin. The really cool thing here is this shortcut is absolutely free. But if you want, uh, you know, some extra features, this is where you can pay for the, um, the pro version. So here I have Shortcut and let's go ahead and click on install now. Activate it. Looks like I have a new update here. Let me just go ahead and update this. All right, so you can see here we have shortcut, which is fantastic. So it's going to show over here on the left. So all you have to do now is to click on get started. So we're going to have now a wizard, which is going to take us through the uh, setup process. So I'm going to say create new store. So the brand colors and the store currency, I just normally leave it as it is. You know, I don't bother with that. But uh, since we have a color palette, I could come over here and paste my hexadecimal value in here. Click on continue. And now... It's giving us two options to either start from scratch or start with demo product. So I'm going to start from scratch, click on continue. Now, this is my email address for my store notifications. That's cool. I'm going to go and click on continue. So now it's setting up our store. And in a moment, you can see here that we, our store has been set up. I mean, this is so easy. In fact, this is the easiest setup that I've done ever. Next, I'm going to click a product to add a product here. And the product I'm adding here is our membership. Okay, remember, we have a membership level called Lifetime. So I'm going to call it here Life, uh, Lifetime Members. And then I'm going to click on Create. Next, we're going to add a basic description in here. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. So this is what describes your membership. Okay. And what you can also do here is you can um, add some, um, a bit of styling here. Right, so over here we can also add, you know, our image. So if I click on add, now this now wants me to complete the setup. So let's go ahead and do that because you are going to be doing this process as well. So I'm going to click on complete. It's asking me to leave. So I'm going to leave the page. Now I already have a, an account with Shortcut, but in your case, you want to add your full name here, your password, and then you can sign up for Shortcut. So I'm going to continue here with Google because I have a Shortcut account. So here is my um, email address. So you can see here it's already saying your store has been registered, blah blah blah. And here's my store URL. So pretty much everything is uh, looking good here. I'm going to click on Next. This is where you get to connect your Stripe or PayPal. So let's go ahead and connect uh, PayPal. Now, in your case, you definitely need to have either Stripe or PayPal because this these are the two most popular ones that allow you to collect payments from your customers. So I need to add my email address. Great. I'm going to click on next. And then I'm going to log in. All right. So I need to add my authentication in here. Five, six, seven. Now, in your case... You may not need to do this step, so it's pretty much um, up to you and how you've set up your PayPal. So it looks like everything is all connected now. So that means if people come to my uh, website, they can purchase their products through PayPal. Let's go to the next step. And now it's saying your store is all set back to WordPress. Now, did you notice how simple that was? So now that I have my store, you can see I have more information now. It's saying create products. I've already done that. I've connected my payments. And this is where all the stats are going to show. Let's take a look and see what pages Shortcut has created. So if I come over here to pages and then click on all pages. So you notice that we have a dashboard and we also have a checkout page. What we also need to uh, take a look at is in our shortcut here, we go to our products. There's a few things that we can do here with our products. Let's go in and add our pricing and also a bit of the design. So I'm going to click here on edit because while we're working on this, uh, if you recall, this kicked us out and took us to complete the design of, um, I mean, the connection with Shortcut. All right, so I have this now. Next, we're going to add our image. So we have some images here. In fact, you don't want us to upload it, so no problem. So let's just see which one is cool here. Should we go with that one? I think this one will do. So we're going to go with this one. We're going to click on it once and then click on Choose File. 
Okay, so our image has been added now. So this is going to be our basic page, which sells our lifetime membership. All right, so let's go down here. This is where we get to choose our pricing. So I'm going to go in here and let's call this lifetime members or lifetime membership. So once we have this, we can either decide to have this as a one time or it can be installment or subscription. So we really have uh, quite a few options here, which are very good. So for this one here, I'm just going to say one time. And for the price, uh, let's say it is $997. We're assuming that this has great value. All right. So this is $2,997. So the only way, the only reason why I'm doing this is because this is giving us a discount from this to that. Okay. So let's go ahead and create our price. Great. So you can see here this price here, the higher one has been crossed out and now it's giving us $9.97. Okay, fantastic. So if we want to add another price here, we can go in and do that. We can add them as installments if you wanted to. I mean, it's pretty cool. Let's go and try this. So lifetime. I really want you guys to have all these options um, that you can do while you're building your own site. So let's go to installment. So the price here is, let's say, 307. And then it's saying repeat payment every month. And then these are three. Revoke access when installments are completed. <laughs> you know, uh, you, can, uh, you can activate that. But let's just leave as it is. Um, if you wanted to do a free trial, you can actually add a free trial here. And this could be maybe, what, three days, maybe? And create a price. So now we have two plans. Pretty cool. Now let's move on and uh, you can... Uh, track the quantity, but since this is a digital product, we don't have to bother with that. So let's leave it as it is. So this is where now you want to um, come over here to your integrations. This is very important. In fact, let's uh, before I do the integration, I have to save the product first. So this is where we get to connect Shortcut with Shore members. So I'm going to click on this drop down now. Notice that Shortcut, I mean Shore members. And shortcut works really well together. If I scroll all the, way there, all the way down here, you can see it's right there. But if you wanted to use this with other, you know, services like BuddyBoss, Tutor LMS, LearnDash, and so on, you would have to buy the pro versions of Shortcut. All right, so let's go with show members here. Now I can select my item and it is lifetime members. Add integration. And now we are pretty much good to go. All right, so let's scroll down here. Now, if you were selling uh, something that needed licensing, you could activate it here. And if you had some downloadables, you could always come over here to the downloadables, okay? So that they have access to download. Now, let me show you how this works. So this will add all our items here in a secure storage. So let me click on upload. So I'm gonna pretend that, uh, let's say, this Divi here is one of my downloadables, okay? Uh, guys, I'm just pretending, okay? <laughs> but in your case, this could be an ebook. It could be any other information that you may need to uh, add to the membership. So there we go. We have it right there. I'm going to click once on it. And then I'm just going to say ebook or cooking ebook. So let's go ahead and choose the file. And now it has been added. So if I click here, I could download it, archive it, or pretty much remove it altogether. So you can have as many downloads as you want here by clicking on add downloads. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. So now let's take a look at our design. So uh, pretty much I think everything is in place here. So if at any point you want to get rid of this other payment plan, all you have to do is to uh, delete it. And uh, here we have this free trial. You can remove that if you wanted to, as I mentioned. So pretty much we are good to go. I'm going to save this product. And what I'm also want to do here is to just go to instant checkout and take a quick view at this. So if I click on view, 
it's going to show me what this looks like. And you can see here, it's a simple page layout. I also have uh, these three installments here, but of course you want to give a better description. So there we go. You see it has uh, 307 times three, or it can just go for the 997. So you can see the price is changing over here as we choose. So that's looking great. If you want to add your credit card, you can just click over here and this now as your credit card. If we have coupon codes, we can add our coupon code here and pretty much the discount will be applied. But since we've already applied it here, there's no need to do that. So as you can see, this is a very clear checkout page. Now let's fix our menu. So we're gonna come over here to appearance, click on menus, because right now I notice that it's getting out of hand because it hasn't been created. So as you can see here, our menu has not been created. So let's call this main menu like that. We're going to assign this to the primary menu and click on create menu. Next, we're going to add all our links. So we have our shop. In fact, let's view all. So we need the home, but the DV one is what we need. We have the shop here as well. And what else do we need to add? The workshop. So let's add this to the menu. So we have these three links. So we're going to leave the dashboard as it is, save menu. We now have our menu here and we are right here on our homepage. So if I click now on become a member, this should take us to the checkout page, which is right here where we can choose our payment options. Pretty cool. And when we scroll down here, if we take a look at one of our blog posts, it takes us to our blog post and this looks great, but if we wanted to take a look at this as someone who is not a member, let's open a new incognito window and we should be able to see what this looks like. It should give us an error. And sure enough, it's saying this content is restricted, blah, 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 become a member or you can log in. So if I click on login, look at that. I can just log in just like that. Okay. Or I can become a member. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this tutorial, leave me a thumbs up and also don't forget to share this video. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this tutorial, leave me a thumbs up and also don't forget to share this video. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.